Greetings and welcome back to the Casual Wargamer. Uh, this past weekend, um, August 31st, September 1st, I attended a two-day five-game GT held locally by my friend Luke Townsend. Um, managed to get a full 30 players, which was great. I've never done a proper tournament. Um, it's always been local shop ones for us. And it's been on my bucket list almost uh, to play in a proper tournament. So I went for it. Um, even though I am very much an introvert and I don't like loads of people and I don't like loud noises, <laughs> I put myself through it for the sake of um, the experience. And what an experience it was, I've got to be honest. Um, some really cool um, people, some really cool armies, and I got to meet that lovely chap from Simply Warhammer. Um, big wave. <laughs> um, I didn't get to play him, unfortunately, which is a shame. Something that must be rectified in the future. Um, <laughs> but yes, an interesting experience. Um so I'm still going to give you a, a, a quick rundown of how it went. Um, I took my usual 2,000 point list, the one I've been playing for uh, a number of months um, as practice for this particular event. You know, um, I will say with the word spoilers, but not unexpected spoilers, I didn't do great. Um, <laughs> I, although I personally didn't play anyone that I felt was overly competitive, um, there were some really strong, I think, competitive um, players and lists at the event. Um, my list was woefully um, ill-prepared um, for the uh, <laughs> games that I played. But as I'm here to roll dice and play with army men, as my missus likes to say, I'm not going to complain. I had an absolute blast this weekend. Um so things went up a couple of days before the event. So you got to see who you were playing um, at the start. And I got this uh, lovely chap, Walter. Hey, Walter, if you're watching. Um, with an Astra Militarum, uh, basically a tank regiment. And I remember really sitting there thinking, how the hells am I going to deal with this? Um, I had images of him rolling these tanks up onto the objectives and go take them off me. <laughs> Um, and I won't deny, um, this was a, a fun game, but a really tough one because although I've got some anti-tank in my list, it just wasn't enough to be able to deal with it. Um, and the secondaries didn't really come up for me in this one. Um, in fact, even with the painting bonus, I didn't breach my, um, goal of at least 30 points. It was my lowest scoring game of the weekend. Um, Walter took a significant 89 to 27 victory, which was great. Um, his army really deserved it. Um, I was just losing stuff, boom, 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 boom. Lots of tank shots, um, shocks or shots, shots. Um, and I just really couldn't, I didn't have the means to really get things onto objectives or to deal with what he had. Um, so quite a tough game. I think in hindsight, I was a little too defensive. Um, realistically, I should have still just tried to go forwards. Uh, but as I say, primaries were pretty much a no-go for this one and secondaries just weren't in my favour. Really good game though. Round two, um, I had another Astra Militarum player. Um, she brought a, a more mechanised list. Um, there were some tanks, there were some Rogal Dawns, there were some Torox, a fair few squads of infantry, and a Bane Blade. <laughs> so once again, it may not have been lots of little tanks, but it was one big tank which I was going to struggle with. Um, and it was... Let's just say... It's, it didn't come up quite as well. I, I did better on the secondaries in this particular game, um, but the main blade was so perfectly positioned that there was a nice avenue of fire down the middle, and we all know the middle of the table is important. I had to try and deal with it. I had to waste shots on it, and I did bracket the main blade. 
Um, it was something I just couldn't afford to leave alone. But um, the way she played was this nice pincer manoeuvre, really, took on the sides, grabbed those objectives, and kind of kept me uh, back. I wasn't really able to do the primaries um, so well, but the secondaries were slightly more in my favour. Um, and that one went to a 100-point win uh, to my 37, which was, I think, a quite impressive. Um, <laughs> things really went well for my opponent in that game. Good fun, though. Now, round three. If you are a viewer of this channel and you watch the tournament reports from our local store, you will know that in every tournament that I play, that he turns up in, I will be put up against my friend Robin and his Dark Angels. So when I come to a 30-person GT, who do I get? That's right, Robin and his Dark Angels. <laughs> it was like, oh my lord, really? <laughs> um, Robin brought a Gladius Task Force list. And I thought, okay, I've got a reasonable chance here. We're, we're both kind of on the same sort of level. Um, unfortunately, my list was much more shooty, whereas Robin's was very much an assault-based list. Um, jump Assault Intercessors, Deathwing Knights. Um, and although he had a couple of ballistas as his anti-tank, uh, one of which did go bang, um, I really struggled to deal with anything here. I, don't get me wrong, I, I, I felt I did well um, to hold him back as long as I did. Um, but quite frankly, his army was brutally good at smashing mine um, with uh, flails and chainswords. And at the end of that particular one, um, Robin walked away with a 97 to 48 win. Um, Again, a really good game. Quite frustrating, if I'm very honest. Because I really thought I had a chance on this one, and it just didn't materialise. Um, that was the end of day three. Uh, day three? Day one, even. Where am I getting day three from? There's only two days. Um, <clears throat> sorry, too much of the old hotty chocolate. Hmm. Ah, just what you need after a long weekend of gaming. Um, so that was the end of day one. Let me get my words correctly out there. Um, and I've got to be honest, it was very, very loud. <laughs> um, it was beginning to get rather warm as the day went on. So to escape out into the cool air was great. Um, and I got a good night's sleep. I was very, very tired and exhausted, but really pleased. I hadn't got any wins in. But I didn't really care because I'd I'd played some really good opponents. Um, day two, and it was partly raining in the morning, and the windows of the venue, which are rain had rain sensors, decided they were going to keep closing. Um, so the heat today was absolutely brutal. Um, quite literally, I I mean I'm a big bloke anyway, but I was literally roasting and sweating. Um, and the day felt incredibly louder, to be honest. I don't know whether <laughs> that was just me or what. Um, but I got to play uh, for round four, um, a Chaos Space Marine army, um, played by someone who I have faced once before in one of our local store tournaments. Um, I think it was at the end of ninth edition. So, hey, Jack. Um he had a Veterans of the Long War list. Um, I had the 10-point painting bonus. His wasn't finished yet. Um, and I thought, okay, I've got a slight edge maybe. If I'm going to do as bad as yesterday, I've got that on my side. Um, <sighs> Jack's list, <laughs> really, really good. Um, a lot more infantry sort of based, uh, although it was Warp Talons and Raptors primarily. A load of cultists and beastmen, which died quite successfully to uh, Re uh, Repulsor Executioner Fire. Uh, but he also had two 
forge fiends with the ectoplasma cannons which i had played fairly recently in a game against my friend lacy uh, where they were just going budum and wiping units or heavy intercessors off the table and i had exactly the same problem here um, i just couldn't keep those alive long enough um and well, he had one cool thing. Uh, <laughs> he had a corn demon prince who basically put his axe into my repulsor executioner, detonating it, stripping him of like, I think it was five, maybe six wounds, um, and then being chunked by everything that I could throw at it. Um, but he's like, ha, ah, take my tank out and do half my job for me. Thank you very much. Um, unfortunately, though, as I say, it was Warp Talons and Raptors. And so once again, I was placing a primarily assault-based army. And although I did a lot better, I got a nice score on this one. Uh, well, a nice score for me. I don't think it was particularly high scoring for either of us. Um, it was, again, a case of I just didn't have the means to handle an assault-based army as easily as I wanted to. And Jack actually, despite my 10 point bonus, won with a 48 to 35 win. Um, much deserved. I don't know that I could have done much more in that particular game. Um, I definitely think I was more aggressive on day two than I was day one. I think day one I was a little too defensive, especially against the Astro Militaro players. Uh, I tried to be a bit more aggressive this time, and although it certainly helped me with some scoring, it just didn't net me what I needed. Last round, and I got Robin's son, who I, who plays Tyranids. He had brought a Vanguard onslaught. I haven't played him for some time, to be honest. Um, and so this was kind of nice. And I haven't faced Tyranids for a good few months either. Um now, this was an interesting game. Let me just find this on my list of things here. Because I haven't really been telling you what the missions and stuff were. But this one for us was um, Crucible of Battle, Adapt or Die, and Take and Hold. Um, so we were in those awkward triangle deployment zones. And although it's a Vanguard organism, uh, Vanguard Onslaught detachment, it didn't really infiltrate much forwards. Um, and he had a load of monsters when he first rolled up i was thinking because i didn't really look at most people's list i wanted to be surprised um i was expecting this was going to be a crusher stampede because there was a shed load of monsters um norn emissary uh Malanth malanthrope um carnifex screamer killer um and a tyrannifex and these were all sat back on his objective he he basically castled all these monsters on his objective um presumably because he thought i was going to deep strike a load of stuff or strategic reserve it um and what actually came forward was gene stealers and gaunts and the gene stealers died to just massed firepower dice up the wazoo um and i really thought okay i've, I've got this one i've got this one in the bag um Key point of this, and probably my highlight of the uh, tournament, was um, the, or oh, sorry, my Brutalis coming in, charging into the Norn Emissary, shoulder barging it into a wall, and then basically punching the snot out of it and killing it. Um, that was my high point. I'm, I'm, I'm taking that uh, to the bank. Um, the problem with this particular game ended up being, unfortunately, that by the time we got going, I think I had lost a fair chunk of things. I had tried to focus on just three objectives and um, keeping the middle, and I successfully kept the middle. That's, that wasn't so much of a problem, but then trying to hold everything back, I was losing models. Um, can't go wrong with hot chocolate. Well, right, yes. Um, when it come down to it, I ended up on the last turn with Bring It Down and within very good range of dealing ultimate death to the 
Carnifex and Screamer, Screamer Killer. And everything I put into it, shooty wise, assault wise, even the Brutalis. The, um, actually, tell you that, I think the Brutalis found its charge. But everything else, multi melters, um, melter rifles, you name it. I was putting shots into these two big bad boys and they passed every single save. And that cost me the game. I would have uh, managed to seize victory. Um, and then as my opponent had the final round, he scored everything last, and it, that caused him to snatch the necessary victory that he needed to do. And he walked away 70 to 59. Um, a really close game. Really close. There was a lot of death. There was a lot of piling up. Um, pretty much the same with Jack's game against his Chaos Marines. We just have de we had dead piles along the tables. Um, very brutal on both sides. Um, at the end of the event, <laughs> I came thirtieth. I came dead last. The only player to come away with no wins. However, I did come away with a new friend. Allow me to introduce. Spoony. Yes, I got the wooden spoon of sadness <laughs> for coming last. So Spoony is my new mascot from now on. Um, I think I'm going to have to get a little base for him so he can stand there by the side of the table and basically go, you're doing really badly. Uh, <laughs> I also got, I'm just going to show this off. Um, I can't remember the name of the studio. When I find it, I will pop it in the comments a bit. But there was a, uh, a 3D modeling and what have you stand um, there as well, which had some really cool like dice rollers and things and had 3D printed the trophies and whatnot for the winners and whatnot. But they also did these cool, this is just showing off now, these cool little 3D printed multi-part dinosaur kits. Um, well, I think it's got like breathing fire, so I'm not really sure. I'm, to me, it's a T-Rex with a, something in its mouth. Um, <laughs> but I got one of them as well for coming last. Uh, the missus has named her Diana Saw. So make of that what you will. <laughs> but they had some cool stuff, so I shall pop their thing there. You can have a look at their website. Um, so, yes, I came a grand total of last. But I will be honest, despite it being incredibly hot, incredibly loud, um, and not really kind of in agreement with uh, the uh, terrain setup a little bit, um, I can't remember now whether it was ITC or UKTC terrain sort of stuff. So basically, I don't have one to hand, or do I? No. So um, everything was the triangular sort of um, corner pieces. But there was absolutely no windows, no doors, and the upper levels were blocked so that even models up there couldn't see out. Um, I don't like that. I like it for a couple of reasons. One, I th it takes away from the immersion of the game for me. These are supposed to be ruins. There should be windows and doors. Even if you're going to do the silly tournament thing, if you can't fire through or into the ground floor, there should be upper windows. In fact, um, from talking to people on the day, nobody used the upper floors of any of the buildings because of it so you may as well have just popped down big cardboard boxes and gone that's your terrain um, i didn't like that um, apparently it was only for this event they had rented this terrain um, so in future they will have proper terrain um, it also meant that if i had known that i would have changed my list i bought suppressors uh, who want to be on that higher vantage point so they get the extra plunging fire bonus and they were utterly pointless to me, except in the last game against Tyranids, where they actually did some damage. But I wouldn't have taken them had I known that's how the terrain was. Now, that's not a dig at anybody. It's just how things turned out. Um, and I'm not a big fan of tournament terrain layouts anyway. Um, I think there's just... I, I should do a video about it, to be honest. But I just kind of felt that there was too many either open areas where the big guns 
like the Tyrann FX or the Bane Blade or whatever, were able to just have a uh, a good firing position. Um, or everything was kind of in the way and it hindered me and not being an assault based army i'm relying on having some fields of fire and it just didn't happen um now again i'm not putting that down to being why i lost i lost because i'm a casual player and i wasn't building a, i wasn't building or playing a list that was up to the meta in any way um it was just kind of little things that kind of um niggle you a little bit but I had an absolute blast. I met some really cool people um, and got to have a weekend of 40k. Unfortunately, they're going to do well. Hive City Gaming, as Luke's um, little event organisation thing is called, are going to do, I think, monthly events um, here locally. I will put the link to their... Um, Actually, I don't know if they got a web page. They got a Facebook thing. Look for Hive City Gaming. Um, but if I find the link, I'll pop it in the uh, comments below in the little blurb. Um, we're going to do ones every month, but I will probably not due to it coming up towards Christmas. Ugh, that horrible word. Um, and work will start escalating. I will probably not actually get to go to another one until January. So, um, but. I will let you know how it goes. Anyway, um, this has gone on slightly longer than I intended. I'm waffling. Um, but thank you for watching. Um, any comments, um, pop them down below. Give me a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. You all know the good stuff. And um, let me know what you think. I mean, what I said about the tournament terrain and uh, the layouts for it. Let me know what you think. And whether you want me to do a video for it. And I'll add it to the list. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. Um, take care and good gaming.